Hello and welcome to Pep Talk with me, Mr Pep Rule. Today I'm playing with my jolly penguins and let me tell you, they're full of energy. But what does that actually mean? By the end of this video, you should be able to tell me what forms of energy there are, how we can describe changes in the form of energy, and what energy changes happen when an object falls to the ground. So, energy is a term that we hear all the time, and it's used to refer to lots of different things, but energy can actually take on quite a number of different forms. All vehicles, for example, need energy. Okay, some, like this old-fashioned steam train here, carry their energy with them in order to keep them moving in the form of the fuel that they've got here. Others, like this more modern electric train over this side, use electricity to transfer energy to them from the power station to keep them moving. So all energy, whether it's being stored or whether it's being transferred, is in one of what we call the forms of energy. And there's a few different forms of energy that we need to have a think about. So we're going to look at them all in turn here, OK? Uh, firstly, we're going to think about chemical energy. Now, chemical energy is energy that is stored up inside fuels. And our fuel is the food we eat, OK? And that energy can be liberated when chemical reactions take place. So that's chemical energy, firstly. Next, we've got light energy okay and light energy is energy that's been transferred in the form of radiation sometimes it's actually called radiant energy but more commonly it's called light energy also we've got heat energy and heat energy we know is how hot something is is just a measure of how fast its particles are moving that's how much energy they've got that's heat energy okay when something's moving, we say it's got kinetic energy, like this bullet speeding through the air there, okay? And the faster something's moving, or the bigger it is, the more kinetic energy it's got. Next up, we've got a person doing the uh, pole vault here, okay? And if I lift an object off the ground, that object gains something called gravitational energy potential energy okay the higher it goes the more gravitational potential energy it gains and this gravitational potential energy is stored up in the object until it gets dropped again okay energy can also be stored here in the form of elastic potential energy if i pull the catapult back i'm storing up energy in the elastic until i let it go okay it's energy that's stored up in a springy object when it's either squashed or stretched OK, next up, I've got a, a dodgy picture here, but this is for sound energy. So I've had to use a picture of a sound wave. OK, this is energy that can be transferred from an object in the form of sound energy. If I drop something heavy on the floor, the kinetic energy is transferred into sound energy. So that is my sound wave showing sound energy there. OK, next up, like we saw with the train at the start there, electrical energy is energy that could be transferred by an electric current. So we've got electrical energy there. And last but not least, we have got nuclear energy. Now, this is energy that's locked up in the nucleus of an atom. So that's why we call it nuclear energy. And that is liberated. And you might have seen that when there's been an atomic bomb going off. You've seen that energy being released from the nucleus. So we can see we've got lots of forms of energy. And here's the important part. Energy can be transferred from one of those forms to another one. So let's have a little think about a battery powered torch, like the one that I've drawn really crudely up here, but that's supposed to represent a torch there, okay? Think about our torch. When it's turned off, we've got chemical energy stored up in the battery. There's nothing happening. It's turned off at the moment, okay? But when we turn our torch on like this, okay, this energy is transferred through the wires as electrical energy. And when it reaches the bulb, it is transferred to light and also to heat because the bulb gets hot, okay? And I can tr describe these changes that happen in what we call an energy transfer diagram, which I've got one of here, okay? So firstly, I've got chemical energy in the battery that I'm transferring into electrical energy in the wires, and once it's moved through the wires to the bulb, it's transferred to light that comes out of the bulb and heat, you can feel the heat get the bulb getting hot there. That's what we call an energy transfer diagram, so that's how I can show the changes that take place. So now we know about these energy transfers, what was going on with my penguins at the start? Well, at the start, my penguin was just sat still. He sat at the bottom there waiting to go. He sat on the bottom step. He's not very high, okay? So he hasn't got much gravitational potential stored up in him. He's not moving, so he's got no kinetic energy. But what I do have is 
chemical energy which is stored in my batteries. OK, of course, the chemical energy in those batteries is transferred as electrical energy to a motor, which makes his little stairs go up. And now he is gaining some kinetic energy because he's starting to move up the stairs. And when he gets up to the very top, he's as high as he's going to go and he has gained and he has got stored a lot of gravitational potential energy. We can see there are energy transfers taking place. Now, as he starts off down the slide, obviously he's getting lower. So he's losing that gravitational potential energy that he had stored up. But because he's moving again, he's now got more kinetic energy. And as his little penguin wheels rub against the track, they get ever so slightly warmer. So we've got an energy transfer kinetic into heat. And you can also hear his little wheels rattling along as he goes. So we've got kinetic energy being transferred into sound as well. We've got energy transfers taking place at every stage of my penguin's journey. OK, now what we're going to do is just watch a little video of the penguin again. And I want you to try and draw an energy transfer flow diagram like the one I drew just now for the energy transfers you see, starting out with the chemical energy in the battery. OK, so watch the clip, rewind, watch it again if you need to, pause the video, draw your diagram. OK, and then start up and we'll look at my diagram and see if our diagrams agree. So hopefully you've paused the video, you've watched it a couple of times, you've had a go at drawing your energy transfer diagram. And this is what you've come up with, your energy transfer transfer diagram for the jolly frisky penguin game okay you're starting off with chemical energy stored up in the batteries okay which is transferred to electrical energy in the wiring it makes the motor go to produce kinetic energy as the penguin goes up the steps okay that kinetic energy is getting transferred to gravitational potential energy when he gets to the very top okay now normally this should go straight on but obviously i've run out of room so i've gone back to the start over here okay He's at the top, he starts down the slide, so his gravitational potential energy is getting transferred back into kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy is getting transferred into sound as he rattles down the track and heat as his little wheels get warm. And you notice it's actually sound and heat. It's not sound turns into heat or sound transfers to heat. The kinetic transfers to sound and heat. So that's everything we need to know about forms of energy and energy transfers. Any problem with that at all, don't hesitate to tweet me at Mr underscore Pepperell or email me and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for stopping by.